Yo, what is up guys and welcome to another Wild Rift video and in today's video I'm going to be giving you guys a tier list for every single role in the game and yet again so much has changed we got massive buffs massive nerfs and you can see the first massive change here already there's timestamps in the description to skip to whichever list you want to do but i quickly want to talk about something i am extremely passionate about and some of you guys may know it y'all remember the fitness and diet coaching that i did well around 65 people joined the program and we got some insane transformations already considering we've been doing this for two and a half months right now i just created this this instagram page player versus fitness i'll put a link to it in the description i'll put a link to it in the in the pinned comment and honestly you know i ask you guys for a favor right here if you want to follow it if you want to support me if you want to give the posts a like if you want to share the posts and all of that please do so it will really help me and the business and the reason that i'm so extremely happy talking about this is because i've seen the change that it makes to people's lives i've literally seen people turn from depressed and just being afraid to take their shirts off to posting shirtless pictures in their instagram stories guys you know this i want to help more people and the thing is you can enter the program as well the link is in the bio of the instagram you can just click on it and we've been working hard and as you can see we've been developing our own app even where we're gonna put your own diet your own fitness routine your own health routine because it's like a complete surface a complete individual program for you to achieve your goals so fill it in you know if you if you're even remotely interested fill this one in we'll reach out back to you um, and then i'll plan a meeting with you to fully explain how the program works so you can see whether or not it's something for you so you know thank you for watching that part even if you're not interested i would honestly just appreciate it a lot if you guys followed the page interacted with the posts just to get it out to more people so you know i don't do this very often i actually never really do it but that's like sort of a favor you can really help me out by doing this so thank you very much and i apologize for delaying the, the video on to the tier list so we start off in the baroness so i've been playing some games and fiora is ridiculously strong as i had imagined after reading the buffs you know the vitals doing more damage quite literally the vitals are the vital part of fiora's kit right like her whole kit revolves around hitting vitals so when you buff the vital it's like it's like you're buffing that one fine point that makes a massive change it's like like let's say let's say you have a bottle and it turns from this to this you know if you if you turn it like a meter or if you turn it a little bit here it doesn't make a massive difference but if you move your hand even a little bit here you can see it moves the bottle a lot you see if i do the same thing here it doesn't move the bottle a lot. but if i do it here the hand movement you, see, you know what I'm talking about? Like This is the vitals. These are the vitals of Fiora. You touch them a little bit and it makes a massive difference. Just touch it a tiny little bit and it makes a difference, that, like, an unforgettable difference. That's what she said. So truly, truly broken tier right there. And another hero, here I'm saying hero because I'm playing on of Kings. Another champion that's extremely powerful right now is Darius. And that's for a different reason. Let me explain to you why. There's one thing Fiora lacks, but she's still broken tier which is tankiness and after she kills an enemy what what's next right after she kills an enemy well first of all her ult is extremely powerful but like after that she's gonna lack damage and that's where you get darius right that's where you get darius when he gets that kill when he gets that ultimate resets he can dunk the entire enemy team the only reason he's not broken tier compared to fiora right is he's not as strong at 1v1s even though he is very strong which is why he's top of S plus tier, by the way. Like, I'm only saying why he's not broken tier. Not quite as strong as Fiora. Not quite as fast at turret pushing. He can't jump over walls. Like, for example, Fiora, the other good thing about her is if you get caught, you can simply dash over walls to run away, right? So Fiora is like a complete package, except for tankiness and, like, sustained damage. But she doesn't need it. You have to play her as a split push. I really suggest you to look up some of my Fiora videos. They're all still completely viable right now. And just learn how to play her now. Jax. I have a lot to say about Jax. A lot, a lot, a lot. But I'm not gonna say it now. I'll say it during the jungle part. Because right now, um, AP Jax is not playable top lane. But like a mixed Jax is okay. By the way, I will pick winners for the skin giveaway in the next video. I'm not gonna forget. So for last month, I gave away two skins on the main channel, two on the second channel. I'll pick the winners 
uh, in the next video. And for this month as well, I'm doing two skin giveaways as well for Wild Rift. All you have to do to enter is put down a comment below. And you can comment anything, like any any remarks you have about the tier list. I always read every single comment, so it's not in vain. Um, but about Jax, you know, the Jax rework is an overall buff. Um, not as much to AD Jax as AP Jax. Yet again, I'll get to this later. But he's, he's definitely stronger. His ult is a bit better. He pushes turrets a bit faster. He's just very, very powerful. You go for Rift Maker. Well, you go for full AD plus a Rift Maker, basically. That's a very, very powerful Jax build right now. Camille is overall just massive, massive hip champion right now. She does everything. And even in the early game, which, which she generally tends to struggle with um, at, she's still fine. Like, she's actually still fine because... She can utilize her second ability to just heal up. You can even go fleet footwork to make sure you sustain your lane a little bit more easily. One second. Oh, no, that's too much. And like, if you get to the mid-late game, we all know what mid-late game Camille does, right? You can just ult the enemy ADC, absolutely destroy them. And even if the enemy tank dives your team, you as a Camille are an anti-tank champion. Your second ability does damage based on max HP. Your ultimate dam your ultimate does damage based on max HP. Your first ability does true damage, right? You're gonna have a Divine Sunder, which does damage based on max HP. Max, max uh, HP. My point being, Camille can do everything. Camille can literally do everything. She one shots ADCs, and she takes down tanks as well, while being an extremely strong one v one champion as well. Um, Set, you know, he's gotten a nerf. He's some of his items has got have gotten nerfed. But he's still a very relevant pick in the top lane. Extremely, extremely tanky. Very, very strong early game because of his healing passive. You know, after he trades, he can just heal up. Late game, he's very, very good. But you know what he kind of lacks? Let me tell you what he lacks. Right now, there's a lot of hero uh, champions that are very fast, like Fiora, very mobile. They can just dodge out Set's abilities and they can sort of dance around him. Set is not mobile at all. Like his first ability gives him movement speed, sure, but it's really not quite enough compared to like, if you look at all of the other top laners, except for Darius, right? They're very, very mobile. You know, Camille, Fiora, Jax, Renekton, even Garen, because he can cleanse himself and use his first ability, or, or Gwen. All of them are just more mobile than that Set. Set just really, He's very strong, but he's just not mobile. And in the current meta, I feel like you do kind of have to be pretty mobile. Renekton, the beast Renekton, I should say. I'm still talking about that. You guys remember that buff a couple of months ago on his ultimate? The buff that made him get like so much more HP on his, it's actually not even that much worse, like 200 more HP, but it feels like you have like double the health of the old Renekton. Um, that's what made Renekton. That's what brought Renekton from S tier to the S plus tier, guys. And it's honestly, what can I say? Like, it's ridiculously powerful. Ridiculously, ridiculously, ridiculously powerful. And also the change where he can shred through shields, obviously it's a little bonus too. He wins most 1v1s, and in the late game, he one-shots ADCs too. He does fall off late game, of course, but he's still extremely powerful. Like, he's very tanky. Talking about being tanky, by the way, Garen. I don't even want to talk about Garen, so I'm not going to do it. Gwen. Gwen, guys. Gwen gets nerfed and nerfed and nerfed and nerfed. But does it matter? It does not matter. Her kit is just too strong. Her, her, she just heals up so much. She doesn't even care about tanks. Like it, it genuinely doesn't matter how tanky you are. It doesn't matter how much HP you have and how much magic resist you have. Because first of all, she does true damage. Secondly, she does true damage based on your maximum HP. So... Honestly, you would much better be off just doing nothing and let her, letting her kill you. Obviously, that's a joke, right? But she's very, very strong. She does struggle early game. That's the one reason she's not broken tier. She really does struggle early mid game. But get to that late game, guys. It's game over. Like, it's absolutely game over. Maokai top lane. He's gotten nerfed, but definitely still sitting comfortably in that S plus tier. Uh, a lot of sustain. The nerf on his passive is not quite enough. And then, of course, in the late game, he just becomes an absolute beast of a champion you know that ultimate has so much cc his, his second ability can just go through the dashes and he counters the meta as well right like all of the champions that can dash away and all of that like if a, if if a jax is about to stun you you just dash away if a fiora is about to dive you you dash away darius is chasing you you dash away but against a maokai you cannot dash away when he uses his second ability he's gonna chase you to downtown and hell and beyond he's gonna chase you down 
everywhere. And then after he gets to you, he's going to ult you, which you cannot dodge, by the way, because you're already rooted. And then he's going to push you back into his team with his first ability. So what I'm trying to say is this champion will be on top of you, whether you like it or not. And you will get caught off. Like even I don't care how well you're positioning, you will get caught by a Maokai. Um, Vladimir doesn't need an introduction. It's Vladimir. You know, he wins every lane, really. He does struggle early game. Of course, he, his first ability only heals him for 24 HP early at level 1, which is really not a lot. But any moment after that, like, you reach your ultimate, it's just easy. You can even ult the wave to heal up, like, no joke. You can ult the enemy and the wave, and you just be back to full HP. So, you should never really struggle lane with Vladimir. And... If you're a good Vladimir, you can 1v5 most games. Because in the late game, he'll one-shot people. While being untargetable himself, by the way, because of that second ability. Shan top lane. This has been a rough choice for me because I generally don't tend to put Shen in the S plus tier. For the simple reason that Shen is not a solo queue pick, right? He's a very good duo and trio queue and competitive pick because of that beautiful ultimate. But in the solo queue, it's a little bit more difficult since you can't really properly coordinate your ultimate, right? But he's so good... And the Sunfire Ages buff recently really made me realize that Shen does definitely belong in the S plus tier. Um, even if you're not able to properly ult your teammates, his 1v1ing is just very, very strong. And your ult will simply just provide a lot of value. Like, I don't even care if your teammates are not that good. You being able to ult into the teamfight whenever, wherever you want is already like such a massive value just because of how strong Shen really feels right now with that Sunfire Ages and all of that. Atrox feels a bit lackluster, and I'm saying this compared to the old Atrox. He's very strong, like, bear in mind, he's top of S tier. He's very, very strong. Um, but he feels a bit lackluster compared to the old Atrox, because, again, I feel like, I don't know why, but it feels like champions are just more mobile or something like that. It just feels like he can't really do what he was, what he used to be able to do. And perhaps that's just because of the meta shift, you know, because of Lilia being very good right now and such. I don't really, or Ezreal, you know what I mean? Like a lot of these here, a lot of these champions are just good right now that can sort of deal with these, these champions that rely on the enemies being slowed or being stunned, being locked down or anything like that. And now we got my boy, my boy, Nasus, my boy, Nasus. I'm even lowering my voice because I'm gaining testosterone talking about my boy, Nasus. I mean, my boy, my boy, Nasus. Look at this, look at this. Ah, 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 I forgot I changed my table. Oh my god. I'm a man. This doesn't hurt. Oh, Ooh, okay. This doesn't hurt. Nasus with the buff. He's massive now. He's massive, huge, 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 huge champion right now because he just stacks so much more. Like in late game, you're going to have like 200 more stacks on average, which is a ridiculous amount. Like that's ridiculous. Your first ability will just do so, so much damage. I honestly didn't think the difference would be that big, but it's a lot bigger than I think, than I thought. Um, so yeah, I need to move on because we're 13 minutes into the video. But basically, Nas is very, very good. AP Gragas, okay, can one-shot carries, you know, he's okay, he's fine. Volibear top lane, way better than you would expect him to be. Simple reason, the turret diving, right? Whenever your jungler ganks, it's essentially always a kill, because <laughs> you're just gonna dive the turret and stun the turret for five seconds, right? So Volibear is just very, very strong right now, just for the simple reason he can dive the turret like that. And then also in the late game, he generally falls off, but honestly, honestly, in Wild Rift, he feels quite strong even in the late game. Orn is an interesting one, because I have not seen a single Orn in any of my games in the last month or so, but I still believe he's going to be mid S tier. Um, it's just overall a very strong champion, you know, the max HP damage that he has, his passive to give one of your teammates the item to buy, and just overall is very, very solid champion. Urgot got nerfed and feels way worse than before, but I shouldn't underestimate him. I've seen him, I've played against him, I've been destroyed by him, by the nerfed Urgot, He's still very much a threat in the top lane. So as mid S tier, you know, very tanky and still does a lot of damage. And especially early game, will win most lanes as well. Sion, Sion has the, had the unfortunate removal of Hallbreaker, which pretty much 
reduced him from being broken tier to S tier. And also Riot completely changed the matchmaking. You cannot play true inting Scion anymore. It doesn't really work as much anymore. It doesn't cheese the, the matchmaking as much anymore. So uh, that unfortunately just makes him a normal champion, which he's still very strong uh, because of the Sunfire Ages, but definitely nothing in the top tiers. Mundo, for some weird reason, you know, they Mundo only received a small nerf. He used to be broken tier, but again, I feel like slowly but steadily, Mundo has fallen off. And now he's only sitting at like the top S tier really, it's nothing, or sorry, bottom S tier, it's not even anything special, talking about something that's not special either, it's Malphite, it's a rock, I mean he's okay, Yasuo top is okay, Nautilus top, Z top, you know Z top is not the best thing in the world, especially because you're, you're probably gonna have to go for a Black Cleaver, maybe even a Loki Divine Sunderer, a Surura's Grudge, just to be able to beat out those bruisers, right? You know I one time went Blair the King on Z and I actually destroyed the enemy with it, very, very funny game. They had so much HP that I genuinely went Blair the Rune King. And combined with my ultimate, it did so much damage, actually. Um, Riventop, she got the rework, but she's still meh. You know, actually, kill top is perhaps a bit better than this. But, like, you know, I would probably rate him here. Nah, there's no way kill is S tier. This is, this is fine. Like, yeah, I remember why I didn't move him up. Because I thought there's no way kill is S tier at top. Like, it's just not true. Because early game, you get blasted by everyone. I really have to move on. Uh, jungle. Here we get the juice. I made a video about this already, the AP Jax, right? Here is the juice. And this is a tasty juice, by the way, because AP Jax is giga, 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 giga broken. Beyond giga broken. And honestly, I still don't understand why he's not pick or ban every single game. How is that possible? How is Jax getting through the drafts? I can literally win almost every game on Jax if I want to, but I don't need a Jax video anymore. How the AP Jax in jungle, so the one weakness, he only has one weakness, right? Which is his early jungle clear. You just get through that. Get your Nasher's Tooth at four minutes into the game and the jungle clear problem is gone. You'll have a normal jungle clear. Farm your jungle, get some items, and one shot the enemy. That's free real estate. Viego jungle is also very very good. Um, I noticed he just does so much damage. He's one of the heroes, that, one of the champions that can very easily beat beat out some of those bruisers. Well, not very easily actually. It's going to be very difficult, but he can really chunk you down. Like if you think you're unkillable, Viego is going to give you a reality check. And you know, he's going to go Blade of the Rune King. He already has a Blade of the Rune King in his kit, but he's also going to build a Blade of the Rune King, and he'll give you a reality check on you not being that tanky at all. Lilia Jungle is going to give you a similar reality check. Very, very strong hit champion. Didn't get nerfed at all. And still is just going to run down the game. She can farm very quickly. Late game, she's absolutely one-shots everyone. Just overall, very, very broken champion. Kha'Zix Jungle. I want to say the gap between, you know, Jax, Viego, and Irelia. Uh, Jax, Viego, Lilia, and then everything else is pretty big. But the gap between Jax and Viego is also massive. Just, just reminding you why they're not in the broken tier. Kha'Zix is like fine, he can still carry games, um, but again, he's not anything special, he's not like super giga broken or anything like that, but definitely, you can comfortably win a lot of games with Kha'Zix. Shen Shao is, is an underrated pick. No one, not that many people play him, and the thing is, everyone has had this happen to them before, I'm pretty sure, um, where if you're, when you're against a Xin Zhao, you probably are disrespecting his damage, because it's just a Xin Zhao, who cares about a Xin Zhao? And then you get that reality check, right? All of us have gotten this reality check. All of us. Like, I don't care how long you've been playing Wildlet for. If it's at least a week, you must have had the reality check of Xin Xiao at least once. Where some good player picked Xin Xiao and you notice that, wait a minute, Xin Xiao is actually completely broke champion, right? So Evelyn, she doesn't, she's not really that good in the current meta yet again. There's a lot of, there's a lot of champions that counter her that are very good. You know, Nasus, Fiora, for example. Uh, even the Jax, Jax can just ult and third ability her and she's not going to kill him. There's just a lot of stuff that counters her right now. So she just doesn't really work that well in the current meta. Hecarim is quite good, but feels perhaps a bit underwhelming. So, and then again, underwhelming compared to the old Hecarim, right? Which used to be broken tier. Um, but again, he's definitely still good enough to be mid, mid S plus. Uh, mid, mid S plus tier, yes, sorry. Volibear jungle, very, very good. You know, good jungle clear, great ganking. And then also, um, especially if you have like a en good enchanter support, I really suggest you to pick Volibear. You know, if you have like a Yumi, a Lulu, a Janna, 
like a real good buffing support. You know, I'm not talking Soraka and Nami. I'm talking Lulu, Janna, Yumi, as I said. You know, those types of champions that can really, really buff you, that can really, really shield you and all of that. You can just run down the enemy with supports like that. Lee Sin is, complete, is the complete opposite. He's good at invading jungles, ganking, and um, doesn't skill as hard into the late game. But the good thing is, with the recent Lee Sin buffs a couple of months ago, there is one thing he can do late game, which is one shot a squishy. So like this has really made Lee Sin a whole lot better compared to before. Because some of you may remember before, all I would say about Lee Sin is, play aggressive early game, get your teammates ahead, and your team is going to carry you. That's what the Lee Sin playstyle used to be. It's kind of similar now. You're still going to try to get your teammates ahead. But now, you can actually do something late game too. You can catch a squishy enemy and just one-shot them. You go onto them with your first ability, ult them. They're, gonna, they're, they're just going to die. There's nothing they can do against it. They can't flash out of it or anything like that. They're just going to die. Master Yi, guys. S plus tier. <sighs> This is a fake smile. You know, you can tell you can tell a real smile. Like if it's fake, it's like this. If it's real, you know, someone's eyes are gonna join the smile too. So if someone smiles at you like this, it's fake. It looks a bit airy too, you know, and, and someone smiles like this. So you, fun fact by the way, you can make your smile look a lot better by using your eyes. So like if I if I if I try to smile like this on a picture, it's like it looks like this, you know. But if I use my eyes, it's like this, which generally, you know, generally is gonna look a lot happier, a lot better. Small tip. Um, where was I? Oh, the fake smile for Master Yi. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's very, very strong right now. Um, buy the right items and run the enemies down. I've made multiple Master Yi videos, which are definitely still viable right now. Maokai jungle, you just go tank Maokai, and he has an insane jungle clear. His first ability has one of the best jungle, it does one of the highest damage to jungle camps that I've seen. So that also means he has a really good smite with his first ability. Considering you're playing tank Maokai, having a good smite is very, very important, right? So you can, of course, get, uh, get those objectives. Um, his ganking is super good with his second ability as well, by the way. And of course, we all know about his late game scaling. Very, very good. Zed jungle is also really nice. Um, if you're really lacking an assassin in your team, and if you already have enough tanks, you know, if you have like an LSTAR support, um, and a Garen top lane, you can get away with picking that jungle easily. And I actually even suggest you picking that jungle because having an assassin in your team is generally going to be good if the enemies are very squishy, right? So that jungle also has a really fast jungle clear. Skills quite well into the late game because of the low ultimate cooldown. It's just overall a good pick, really. Kindred jungle, she's fine. She's nothing special. The only reason she's not that special right now is because she got nerfed and um, it's gonna be quite difficult for you to play around the marks because you literally have to just follow your marks all the time If your mark says you have to go there You're likely gonna have to go there at some point if you want to you know get stronger and stronger throughout the late game and Just relying on kills is also a bit difficult with the mark. So um, if you struggle with with roaming around the map and invading enemy jungles and all of that then I really don't suggest you to um, Pick up Kindred. I only suggest to pick up Kindred if you have very good map presence, if you have very good knowledge of the jungle, and if you probably, if you if you have at least like three, four hundred games in the jungle, that's what I really suggest you to start picking up Kindred. Talon is quite good. You know, he's an assassin, but there's just some other assassins that are better than him. Um, but he's he's fine. Like he's he's definitely one of the better assassins. Camille jungle. You know, decent jungle clear. Good gank. She can't gank very often. But if she does gank, it's massive because of her ultimate, of course. Um, and of course, she skills really well into the late game too. And she has good objective securing as well. Fiddlesticks, you know, the absolute giga all-in champion. Um, he's better than you think. He's definitely better than you think. Um, his ultimate just does so much damage. But then again, he's not as good as before for the same reason as Evelyn. It just feels like there's a lot of heroes that can sort of deal with him or that have vision like Jin, for example, or Teemo. Uh, and Maokai as well. Like Maokai, Maokai's release definitely put a big nerf on a, on a hero like Fiddlesticks. Because you just can't gank anymore. Because you, you literally cannot gank a Maokai lane. Uh, and in the late game as well, Maokai is just going to put his third ability into the bushes. And it's just going to catch you with it and not allow you to ult and surprise the enemies as much anymore. So Ma that Maokai release alone has nerfed Fiddlesticks pretty massively. Echo Jungle is fine. 
nothing special. He just got buffed recently. He's just okay. Um, hence him being in the S in the S tier, right? Um, Nautilus is fine too. I also want to remind you guys, by the way, I'm streaming Honor of Kings Esports on my Twitch channel. Um, I'm basically co-streaming it, casting it together with Excoundrel, your favorite caster. Um, I'll put a link to my Twitch in the description as well. Um, if you want to check that out, you can. I'm just really doing this to build visibility for myself. I want to get back into casting tournaments, you know. And unfortunately, it's not possible with Wild Rift. And I'm really enjoying Honor of Kings. I got Grandmaster rank in Honor of Kings in seven days, by the way. Which is one of the highest ranks. Uh, I guess I'm just built different with these MOBAs. Um, so I'm having a lot of fun with Honor of Kings. And I'm going live on Twitch almost every day, by the way. So make sure you check that out if you're, if you're interested in all of that. Um, also a reminder, you know, I'll, I put a link to the form for the fitness and diet coaching in case you're interested in that. And the link to the Instagram. Um, it's up to you whether or not you want to do all of that. So... Um, where were we? Nautilus jungle. I'm talking AP Nautilus. Full AP Nautilus. Actually, oh, that's so much better. Full AP Nautilus is definitely S plus tier. I forgot full AP Nautilus because when making the tier list, I was talking about tank Nautilus. But now I just got reminded, full AP Nautilus is the broken stuff and is easily S plus tier. Easily S plus tier right now. Uh, so much burst. Very, very good jungle clear. And in the late game, he just one shots anyone he's like a walking nuke basically atrox jungle same story as the top lane really feels a bit underwhelming doesn't have the best ganks in the world so just sitting comfortably in the bottom s tier shivana very very reliant on her ultimate when she does get her ultimate though a very powerful champion hence her being in the s tier kane got a massive nerf and still playable still okay don't get me wrong especially red kane but blue king, guys, is not like it used to be before. It's Let's just say it's balanced. Like anything that's in the A tier is balanced. I want you guys to understand how this tier list works, right? Anything A tier is balanced. Anything above the A tier is stronger than balanced. So S tier is like strong. S plus tier is like this needs to get nerfed. And obviously broken tier is broken. And then B tier is still like balanced, but like kind of bad. And then C and D tier is just trash. Uh, talking about trash, he needs to be in the trash. So Kane is just fine. Vi is also fine. Um, quite good, but just fine, I would say. She's not, not. I put her down from the S tier down to the A tier. I just feel like, again, she's, she's, she may not fit the meta as well as before anymore. Yone jungle, one of the most difficult jungle champions to pick. I really, really tell you to be cautious before picking this. You got to be really good at Yone to be able to play him in the jungle. Uh, because you got to be able to use the tornadoes very, very well. By the way, guys, make sure you give this video a like if you're enjoying it. Um, supports the channel a lot. So, Remus Jungle is very good too. But I would say, I would say Remus Jungle is like a very beginner-friendly pick. Um, if you get auto filled in jungle, just pick Remus basically. And just roll around the map all the time. Gank left and right. He's very good at that. And it's very easy to do with, his, with, his, with how the champion works, right? Gwen Jungle... Has a similar problem to Jax, uh, actually an even bigger one, her jungle clear is extremely slow. But once she gets up in the levels a little bit, around level 9 or so, she's gonna have a faster jungle clear. But that's a long time that it takes before she gets a fast jungle clear, right? So, um, But of course, when she gets to the late game, she's giga broken. The problem is, as all her ganks are not that powerful. But you know where she compensates at? These 1v1, 2v2 skirmishes that are gonna happen in the jungle and big team fights in the late game. That completely compensates for her weaknesses. Diana jungle, a bit underwhelming in the, in the in a sense where she used to be giga broken because now she's like fine. No one is really picking her up, but she's stronger than you think. She's not like terrible or anything, so you can definitely still pick her up and do a lot with her. Ribbon jungle is fine with the reset. She's fine. She's nothing special. She's just okay. Pantheon jungle, you know. Also, nothing special. He, he's, he's not S plus tier like he used to be, even though he didn't get nerfed at all. It's just he doesn't fit the meta. It's the same story, really. Fiora jungle got buffed, obviously, because Fiora got buffed. But still, I don't really suggest you guys to play it. Shen jungle, you know, Ren, Rengar jungle, all of this, you don't really want to play too, too much. Pike jungle. Kill jungle, honestly, is better than this. Uh, I don't really know why I've put him there. Put her there, sorry. Uh, I keep uh, misgendering kill. Because she has that masculine hat on, so it looks like she's a dude, but she's definitely a woman. I've seen some other pictures. Um, we're getting off guard again. So Olaf is fine. Olaf is stronger than you think. Even though I've put him in the B tier, a lot of people think Olaf is just giga useless. That's not true. 
pick him in the right comp and let me explain to you what the right comp is a lot of cc and tanks so think about shen think about nautilus think about alistar think about Ramus, think about vi think about you know think about those types of champions if the enemies have a lot of those that's when you want to pick olaf and just run them down they will not be able to do anything to you now think about jinx as well adcs that have no mobility olaf really loves enemies with no mobility so if the enemies have no mobility they're very tanky they have a lot of cc that's the perfect draft for olaf which is only going to be like a couple of percent of your games but pull out the olaf like a secret little pick when the enemies when, when you notice that in the draft remember me when i that i said that to you morgana jungle's fine fizz is fine twindermere got a massive nerf but he's still fine and anything else is not really worth talking about and now on to the mid lane um someone just messaged me i i gotta respond to him uh there we go all right so akali mid in my opinion, the strongest mid laner right now. Nothing in the broken tier, by the way. And I consciously chose that because I just don't feel like anything is broken in the mid lane right now. Um, but Akali is definitely the closest one. Massive, massive assassin in the game right now. But I do feel like that is sort of counterplay to Akali. It's not like she's giga broken or anything. Kasadin, similar to Akali. Very, very strong. You know, a good Kasadin player is going to be an absolute menace for the enemy. But then again, wouldn't say he's broken tier or anything like that. Now, Twisted Fate, I wanted to put him as the strongest uh, mid laner, but I honestly, I decided that the nerfs did hit him a little bit. I saw some Twisted Fate in my games as well, um, and I noticed, like, he's still fine, he's still very, very good, but I definitely did notice the nerf of the third ability. The, you know, the Twisted Fates were just not able to dash out as much sustained damage during teamfights as I thought. And the reason the nerf is bigger than I thought is because Twisted Fate throws a buffed card every four basic attacks. And this buffed card skills with AP, right? So it does, you know, having more attack speed does a lot more damage even on AP builds. So his attack speed being nerfed on his third ability, the active attack speed did actually do, do a better job at nerfing him than I thought. So he's still very, very good, but he's just not the best mid laner anymore. And Talking about the potential best mid lane, we got Katarina, right? She got so strong right now. She got unbelievably strong right now. Like, the, bu the buff really, really worked for her. And she still struggles a little bit in the meta, just because there's so much CC, so much counterability with the Crown of the Shattered Queen, with the Stasis and with all of that. Um, with the Wits End as well. The Wits End is so annoying when people build it. And you know what, all what was also a massive nerf to Katarina? You know what actually buried down katarina the change all the way like a year ago when void staff got removed katarina loved void staffs right and now that it doesn't exist anymore people just literally built magic resist boots plus a wits ant and as a katarina you, what are you just gonna do you, you're gonna have to wait until four items until you can do something against them um, zoe extremely powerful but just as difficult as how powerful she is so be very careful picking her up Z mid lane, you know, one of the strongest assassins in the game, works in the jungle, works even in the top lane, and of course, in the mid lane, which is his actual role. Um, very, very solid. And the thing is, Z is the only assassin in the game who can also out-trade an enemy ranged champion. So like an Orianna or something. And the reason he can do that, of course, is with his, with his second ability, third ability, first ability combo. You can just do that in lane, win your lane, essentially, or at least not lose your lane and then when you get a level 5 you all in the enemy or you roam around and you gank left and right very very solid champion diana i have to put her s plus tier even though i honestly haven't seen i've only seen like two diana mates in the last couple of months but they were doing really well and she's honestly she's just strong you know what's funny it's like uh people sort of follow the meta there's so many champions that are so good that people just don't play because the met people are not playing it like if you if you don't see anyone ever play diana why would you do it you know what i mean but if every game you're seeing people people play canon mid lane then you're gonna be like okay it's they're playing it some of the games is gonna work some of the games it's not gonna work but you're you're likely gonna give it a try or at least be curious about it and look up your favorite youtuber uh canon mid lane and check it out you know what i mean you, that may happen so i feel like that's what's happening with diana right now there's just like a downwards trend with diana where people just don't seem to care much about her even though she's still one of the strongest champions in the game vladimir mid lane i mean honestly like honestly 
Honestly, he's here. Honestly, I don't want to put him there because I know when I put him higher up, more people will play him. I hate this champion so much. Like I, this is this is one of my most hated champions in the game, and he's honestly very close to my hatred to Jace. That's how badly I hate this champion. Um, it's just so annoying to play against. He is quite a difficult champion to play. Don't get me wrong, like to play him properly, but. If you do master him, there's just little to no counterability. The only thing you can really do is stasis and pray. It's all you can do. Syndra is fine. Um, with the recent nerfs, she got hit a little bit. She used to be broken tier, but she's still comfortably in the S plus tier. You know, I know it's bottom S plus tier, but it's still she's chilling over there. Yasuo mid lane, whether it's tank Yasuo or damage Yasuo, both are very much viable. Play Yasuo mid lane and you'll be fine most games. Zix mid lane actually is surprisingly good. Dashes out so much damage. He does more damage to turrets now too since recently. Uh, and he's honestly overall just a, quite a good champion. And his poking is just really, really nice. And um, there are not that many champions in the support role that provide enough healing right now to counter out his poking. And even if you do pick a Soraka, which is actually a hard counter to Zix, as a Zix, you can just go for the for the green book. For the Morel oh, I don't know. I don't I don't even know why I just tried. I give up again. I'll try next year again. Uh, you can go Ludens Echo plus the green book to apply anti-heal on everyone. Even Leandris against tanks. You can essentially always pick Zix. And if an enemy is about to dive you, you can put your second ability on yourself and jump away. So like that's his sort of anti-assassin ability. His second ability is really, really good at that. And then of course with the recent change to his ultimate, making the hitbox hit everything, his ult is a lot stronger now. And the ult got bigger too, so he's just going to be able to do a whole lot more damage because it's bigger. On to Gragas, talking about being bigger. Um, oh my god, oh, that is so stupid. Wow. These jokes are getting out of hand, honestly. Um, Gra Gragas is really good. Uh, I, just, I can't even speak, that one was, that one was probably the worst. Of this entire video i am so sorry guys hopefully kids don't get them you know as an adult you try to give these subtle jokes that obviously kids are not supposed to understand see when you watch a cartoon back in the days you know you'll see a lot of these subtle dirty jokes right where obviously as an adult you're gonna catch them but as a kid you'll never catch them and i feel like maybe like if, I, if uh, you know if a young kid is watching them they're like what, what is he talking about you know I mean? but maybe with the current tiktok trends and all of that kids I don't know, whatever. I'm gonna keep making my jokes. Uh, where was I? Um, Gragas, he's very, very strong. Full AP Gragas. We're talking full AP Gragas. Tank Gragas is not good. Um, Yone is fine. Actually, Yone is really... No, Yone is fine. We're talking mid lane here. Yeah, we're talking mid lane. Um, Yone is fine. The only reason Gragas is that high up, by the way, is because he counters like 75% of the champions in the S plus tier. You can just dive them as a Gragas and one-shot them. So Yone is not as good in the mid lane as in the top lane because he gets bullied in the mid lane. Um, and there's a lot of mid laners that have enough mobility to sort of dodge his ultimate and dodge his engages and all of that. And he, he just doesn't really excel in those 1v1s. Because in the top lane, you can just go Blair the Room King, you heal up a lot from your attacks and you just chunk down enemies very easily, right? But in the mid lane, you have to go full crit since Blair the Room King is not going to do anything for you in the mid lane. So it just doesn't really fit his kit as well, honestly. Oriana mid lane, overall like an okay-ish champion. She skills well into the late game, but the problem is if she falls behind in gold, um, she can't really do much anymore. But if you're just good at farming, roaming around all the time, have good wave control and all of that, you can just pick up Oriana, farm yourself to three, four, five items and just hard carry the game. Now, Ari is the complete opposite. This champion wants to be proactive early game, right? You want to shove the waves, you want to gank left and right and get kills everywhere. She's very, very strong, but the reason she's not in the S plus tier is because I feel like her charm is quite weak. When you charm an enemy, the old Ari would give would give you bonus damage on a charmed enemy, but the new Ari doesn't. Now, obviously, the new Ari has a better ult though, but um, I just I just wouldn't rate her S plus tier. She's just okay. Talking about being okay, also Lux, you know, she's okay, she's fine. If you catch an enemy, you kill them, but if you don't catch them, you're giga useless. And then again, I feel like a lot of the champions that are good right now are very mobile or tanky or essentially just able to deal with Lux's damage. Um, Fizz, same story really, right? Like hitting your ultimate as a Fizz can be a bit difficult, 
but he's just okay. And if you skill into the late game, you're gonna one shot everyone, of course, like Fizz does. But early game, he will get bullied like crazy, you know. Mid laners get buffed left and right, and Fizz is just left in the dark, unfortunately. Um, but he's still okay, like he's definitely okay. One of the most underrated picks is gonna be Akshan, a uh, very handsome dude, of course. Um, he's very good, but let me give you a very big but right here. Um, he's extremely difficult to play. When I say extremely, I mean extremely. Like, if you truly want to master Akshan, like, extremely difficult. We're talking, you're probably going to need like 70, 80 games at least to even touch the service of potentially mastering Akshan. And I'm saying potentially, because I haven't even mastered Akshan yet. And I am a damn good Akshan. I've watched Chinese Akshan players, so... That's what brought my confidence down. I didn't bring my confidence down, but that's what essentially showed me what is possible. See, when you look at Chinese players, which are the best players in Wildlife, of course, you can kind of see what the peak looks like on a champion. And when the, you know, when you're watching the video and you don't have a, like a very surprised reaction, you know that that, cha that, that European players are going to be fine on the champion too, and that it's not going to be that difficult to, to master that champion. But when you're watching the video with an open mouth like this, like I was watching the Akshan video, the Draven video, the you know the Z video, then you know a champion is difficult to master. Because if the skill ceiling is that high, it's difficult. And that's that's what happened with Akshan. Um Brand is is not difficult at all. Brand is actually very easy. Uh, Brand got nerfed, but is still definitely uh, on fire uh in Brand, uh, as we say in Dutch. Which is not actually a saying, but him being on fire, Brand. Did you actually know the name Brand? Like, literally means Brand, fire in Dutch. Which I don't know if it's a coincidence. Probably not. Um, but it's just funny that they called him Brand. Um, he's just okay. Like he takes care of tanks. Still very much does a lot of damage. Doesn't struggle as much with mana as he used to anymore because of the mana buffs recently. But you can still pick him up in a minute. Like, don't be afraid uh, of the nerves. He used to be as plus tier though, with, before the nerfs, but still after the nerfs, very, very solid pickup. Echo mid lane, very good, you know, good assassin, uh, with the recent buffs, helped him a lot. Just not that interesting, not that much to say about him. I know Catkit is happy playing him, um, which is some of, one of my friends, uh, playing Echo, of course. And uh, yeah, you can definitely keep playing Echo, buddy. He's very, very strong right now. So Morgana mid lane. You know, she's fine. She's okay. What can I say? She's just fine. Nothing special about her. Skills super hard into the late game. Um, but like early game, of course, it's a little bit difficult to get kills with that route. It's a very difficult route to hit since it doesn't go through minions like Lux's route, right? So against a good opponent, you're going to have a very hard time playing Morgana in the mid lane. Vagar mid. Top of A tier. He's okay. You know, you can stack up quite well and just do a lot of damage but nothing special really you know Irelia mid lane a good Irelia will 1v9 but we're talking about your average Joe playing on Irelia uh, average Joe is going to struggle on Irelia but of course you know you really got to be good at Irelia to play her in the mid lane you got to master her properly and um, that's only when you're going to be able to pull off like proper gameplay proper plays with her Swain mid lane now guys I wouldn't recommend him in mid lane but he got buffed so that makes him like a balanced mid laner in my opinion. He's okay. Like he's definitely going to be fine in mid lane. You can even go for like full AP Swain. He'll be fine in the mid lane. Lucian mid is just okay. He's very mobile. Dashes around left and right. Doesn't really struggle too much in the mid lane. There's not that many longer long range champions that can bully him much. Even if you have like a Zix or an Orianna, which obviously have more range than him. As a Lucian, you can just dodge their their bombs or their balls or whatever you can just dodge them whenever they throw them so you're not you don't really struggle against anything in lane aurelian soul fell off pretty hard like he used to be s plus even broken to you remember but the nerfs upon nerfs upon nerfs upon nerfs finally caught up to his ass and now he's a balanced pick he's fine he's okay like don't get me wrong he's definitely still strong but he's not like remotely broken or anything like that anymore galio mid Simply pick him into the AP Assassins. Pick him into Diana, pick him into Akali, pick him into Kazarin, pick him into Katarina, you know, pick him into that, and that's it. That's all I'm going to say about him. Don't pick him ever again. Jace is Jace. 
Kaisa is so broken that you can even pick her mid lane. Seraphine, I quickly want to talk about Seraphine. You only want to pick Seraphine into full melee composition. That's like the only wild card pick that you can pull off Seraphine with. If the enemy has like four melee champions and an immobile ADC, you're going to be able to hit those five man ultimates on them. But that's really it for uh, Seraphine. So now onto the ADC. And now these tiers are a little bit shorter because there's less ADCs, of course. Kaisa got nerfed. But she's still S plus tier and still the best ADC in the game. She has everything. You know, she, she doesn't struggle with anything. She has poking, sustained damage, finishing off damage because of her passive. She has a shield. She has an invisibility effect. She has bonus attack speed. She has a mixed damage. She does AD and, and AP damage. What else do you need in an ADC? Her range is also okay. It's not like she has a super low range. So her range is also okay. And... What can I say? Like, it's just a complete ADC. She needs a bigger nerf than, than, than what she got. Varus got massive buff, by the way. And we're talking lethality Varus over here. His arrow hurts like a truck now. It's literally like a truck. Th there should be a skin where he fires a mini truck at people. Because it hurts like a truck. It does so, so much damage. It's ridiculous. Truly, truly ridiculous. You know, you can always go back to the to the Varus build that I uploaded on my YouTube channel, which is the Blade of the Room King, Runan's Hurricane, Lethal Tempo build. But now you can actually reliably pick up that Lethality Varus, as well as any other Varus build that you want to do, really. Very, very strong champion. And you can first pick him because it's, his build is adjustable, right? You can play you can play Lethality Varus, you can play Attack Speed Varus, even, hell, you can even play AP Varus if you really need AP. So what I'm trying to get to is you can first pick Varus always. Ezreal is very very good as well, um, very mobile and with the buff to the to the mana mune recently as well, which is also an indirect buff to, to lethality virus by the way, since you build Muramana with it. Uh, you can actually also go Essence Reaper, but whatever. Um, Ezreal always goes Muramana, so you're simply just getting like five, six, seven extra attack damage, which may not seem like a lot at first glance, but that is still like, you know, early game a lot, mid game a lot, and even in the late game, it's like 2-3% extra damage, which is a lot in my opinion. 2% is a lot of damage, you know what I mean? So, it's quite significant in my opinion. And he's, he was already S tier. Sorry, he was already S plus tier. So he just sort of remains S plus tier, com a confident S plus tier. I was even thinking about putting him as the best ADC, but he's honestly not, in my opinion, not better than Kai'Sa and Varys. Next up is Zaya. I had a hard time putting her uh, in the S plus tier. I really wanted to put her top S tier, but honestly, her feathers just do so much damage. The only problem with Zaya is you can't first pick her. You gotta draft her properly. You gotta pick her into those engaged champions. You gotta pick her into those melee champions, and that's where she truly, truly shines. She will demolish them, guys. Kalista does so much damage too. Very, very mobile uh, champion, and the beautiful ultimate too. Allowing you to save your support, right? Or your jungler or whatever you want, you whoever you want to save. It's just overall such a solid pick. You know, her third ability does a lot of damage. Her level 1, level 2 is very strong too. Um, she's a late, later game champion, but her level 1 is actually extremely powerful because of her third ability. Talking about someone that's actually not strong level 1, that's Tristana. But Tristana is so easy, guys. Come on. Just farm up. Get yourself to level 6, 7, 8, 9, where you get some range. Start 1v1ing the enemy. And then you get to level 12, 13, 14, 15. You're going to absolutely hard carry the game with your range. That's literally the formula of Tristana. And if you want to learn how to play Tristana, just look up Hell's Double Tristana. And I'll show you how to play Tristana. You can do that with any champion, really. I've made a video... I ha Wait, can I say this confidently? I've made a video on every single champion. I think I don't have a Zyra video, actually. Even though I'm really good at Zyra. I, I remember I practiced and mastered Zyra, but then she got nerfed. So because of that, I didn't make a video of her anymore. I should make a video for her on my second channel very soon. Uh, I'll do that probably, yeah. So, um, next up, Lucian. Lucian in the ADC role is not as strong as he used to be, really. But he's still very much an okay pick. Um, just, Just fell out of the meta. The problem is like Kai'Sa, Varus, Ezreal, Zaya, you know, they all outrange him. So he struggles with it a little bit now and he doesn't really one shot them as effectively anymore. Uh, I don't know, he just feels a little bit lackluster, a little bit. Jin is very strong. I said little lackluster, but obviously still he's mid S tier, right? So he's very, very good. Um, Jin is good. Like I love Jin being in the S tier. Uh, I hate him not being in the S plus tier. 
but it's fine. Like, I can't really complain. Jin is very, very powerful. You can play him with many different runes. The first strike nerf definitely did nerf him, though. Um, but it's fine. Like, you can go Meteor, or sorry, Arcane Comet, or you can go for Fleet Footwork. It's all completely fine. There's many different builds you can go for. I recently released a, a, a Jin video where I played Jin for 4 hours, 44 minutes, and 44 seconds. Uh, if you haven't seen that one already, check it out. It's an absolute banger. It's one of the recent videos on my YouTube channel. Um, now talking about Draven, I actually recently got really good at Draven, and that's when I noticed that even though I got really good, I can still get a whole lot better. Like, you know, you starting Draven, getting okay at Draven, getting good at Draven, mastering Draven. It's like all the way, my hand is at the S tier right now. That's the difference. So I've made it this far, and I still have this much to go. Like, it doesn't even fit in the frame. That should truly show you, like, how strong Draven is. But it should also show you how difficult he is. But I chose to put him in the bottom S tier because he, like, he has the potential to be broken tier in the right hands. You can say any champion has that. No, that's not true. If you've properly mastered Draven, he is actually broken tier. Um, Zyra is fine. She's okay. Um, she's not that good. It's just she pokes decently in the early game. Her mid game struggles a lot. Her late game is very, very okay-ish. Not nothing special, just okay-ish. Just overall like a solid champion, you can say. Nothing special. Same can be said about Jinx. Problem with Jinx is she has zero mobility, so she can get dive upon. Honestly, I only pick Jinx with a Lulu. That's the only, only draft you should ever pick Jinx with. If there's no Lulu, you should never pick Jinx. This rating is also based on picking her with a Lulu. If you pick her without a Lulu, she, she's, she is like C tier, this one. So with a Lulu, she's like high up in the A tier. Samira, very, very draft reliant. You can only really pick her into a comp that doesn't have reliable CC. Um, reliable CC being like a point and click stun or silence or whatever that just instant instantaneously silences you. Uh, if the enemy doesn't have that, then you're going to be completely fine playing Samira. Sivir, unfortunately, recently got nerfed. She used to be a lot stronger and she used to be like a hidden broken pick because no one really knew about Sivir being extremely strong, but she got nerfed. Um, still very much a good pick. Like, she used to do, like, a thousand damage per basic attack. There was a build for that. I was making a video for it. I played, like, 30 games of Sivir, and then she got nerfed. You know how mad I got? Because all of the time I poured into mastering Sivir was for nothing. Because I didn't even make a video of it after that. I just got so mad, I just dropped the champion immediately. Caitlyn is not that good. She's, like, fine, but she has a lot of range. She can bully a lot. Her first ability is fine. Don't get me wrong, but she just, she just doesn't do a lot of damage. Especially mid late game. Mid game, especially. I always talk about this. Caitlyn falls off so hard mid game. Super late game, she's okay again because she can just one shot ADCs and squishes, but she's never going to be able to take down tanks, which is a big problem if you're playing ADC. Vayne can take down tanks, but she can't do anything else. So she's just chilling at the A uh, in the B tier. Um, anyone else to be talked about? I mean, she should be here. Not blow Twisted Fate, but yeah. Ash is okay. But definitely, definitely on the weaker side. Misfortune, by the way, the reworked Misfortune is so giga trash that I almost considered not even putting her on the ADC tier list. That's how bad it is. It's like absolute zero. The one thing she was good at, which is bursting down the enemy with her first ability, with her ultimate and all of that, she or or sorry, with a with like an empowered basic attack. She doesn't have that anymore. So they took away the one good thing, Misfortune has, that big empowered initial attack, right? The one-shotting attack. So on to the support role. And this one has changed a lot. I nearly did not put Yumi in the S plus tier, but I feel like honestly, even with all of the nerfs, she's low-key still bottom S plus tier. Low-key. Like, and I, I honestly want to say there's a massive difference between Lulu and Yumi. In my opinion, Lulu is a lot better than Yumi. It's not just my opinion. It is true. Um, Lulu is just a lot more powerful. She didn't really get nerfed too hard, and she can just gig above allies. Like, honestly, Lulu is always a pick or ban. Yumi is as well, because people are just so um, so uh, traumatized by Yumi that she's still a pick or ban, but honestly, she shouldn't be pick or ban. You can just counter her now with, like, a Blitzcrank, Leona, Thresh, or anything like that. She's really not 
that strong. She's just bottom S plus tier. It's counterable. Um, talking about Thresh, he got nerfed as well. He gets less souls now from the ground. Uh, and there was another nerf to one of his abilities too. Uh, brings him down from bottom S plus tier to top S tier. It's as simple as that. It's a small nerf. It's a small change in the tier list. Nothing else to say about him. Soraka's support is very, very strong. Uh, she heals a lot. But I don't know. She feels perhaps a bit lackluster compared to before. Not very lackluster, but just a tiny little bit lackluster. Um, but still, overall, keep in mind, top S tier jungler. Now Nami. Nami feels so annoyingly strong. You know, she's, she has such good map uh, lane presence with her third ability, second ability. She has such good catching out potential with her ultimate plus bubble. She holds her own ground, you know, in lane by healing herself up and bullying the enemy. She's just a very solid pick. What can I say? She's a very good support player, a uh, support pick. You can also build her many different ways. You can go Ludens Echo, do a lot of damage. You can go Ardent Sensor, support your teammate. You can even go some of the tankier items. Um, like a protector's vow to cheese the enemy, thinking into de them being able to go into you. If the enemies have a lot of assassins, you can just build something like that and you'll be fine. Um, next up is Leona, a very, very underrated tank. Like, in my opinion, one of the most underrated tanks in the game. People don't give credits on how strong Le Leona is. I remember trying Leona recently. I made a video on that on my second channel, by the way. You can check it out. Just look up Hell's Devil Leona. And I just decimated the enemies. And it was my first time playing Leona in like a year. And that's when I noticed like, okay, this, this champion is super easy to play and super broke. Because she's so easy. She's so easy. She, her ult has massive range as well. You literally just have to hit one ability and you can just follow it up with like three seconds of CC. Hit your second ability before engaging and you're going to be unkillable as well for like six seconds. It's truly remarkable how broken this champion really is. Same goes for Blitzcrank. Maybe I'm a bit biased towards the Blitzcrank because I've been duo queuing with the literally the best Blitzcrank in Europe for a while. The top one and the top two Blitzcrank. He has two accounts and both of them are in the top one and top two, account, uh, top two leaderboards. So uh, maybe that's why I'm a bit biased. But I am also a really good Blitzcrank myself and I know what this, what this champion can do. I know what he can do. You can also build it many different ways. Have many different play styles. You know, you can roam around. You can just stay in your lane. All of it works as long as you're able to hit those hooks well and to be able to play the mind games with the enemies with your second ability as well, jumping onto their asses. Next up is Janna, you know, one of the strongest enchanters in the game right now. Um, honestly, she should be she should be higher up. Like honestly, honestly, it should look like this. She should be swapped with Soraka in my opinion. Uh, why am I saying in my opinion all the time? I it's not really my opinion. It's honestly it's the truth. Like that's what it is. Um, it sounds silly when I say, in my opinion, blah, blah. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so Janna, you know, very annoying early game, level one with her tornadoes. Her second ability is lackluster, but it's her third ability and the ultimate that makes up for it. You know, the third ability giving a big shield to herself and to, to her allies as well. And then as well as her ultimate, just being able to heal her entire team without Janna being forced to stand still, without the enemies being able to CC you out of it. And then the beauty is as well, you can cancel so many so many channel channeling abilities like a Katarina ult, a Samira ult, you know, stuff like that. You can just cancel it um, when you're playing Janna by pushing them away. And when an enemy overextends as well, and sorry, not overextends, when an enemy dives your teammates and is about to kill them, you just ult them away. And besides ulting them away, you're healing your own teammates up and then you can shield them too. So it's like overall just such a broken kit on an enchanter hence her being in a top four of supports and not actually on soraka's spot not that a support is very good as well very tanky very good cc uh just overall very very good it can be a little bit difficult to land this hook sometimes because it is it is a little bit slow the hitbox is a little bit small and it gets body blocked by stuff as well so it can be a little bit difficult uh, you can't even hook through walls that's what i mean with getting body blocked right so can be a little bit hard to to play him effectively pike is very good like if you're lacking damage in your team or if you're lacking an assassin and you have enough tanks and all of that you can pick pike support and just absolutely destroy the enemies with it his ultimate does so much damage you know and the lethality items work so well with him too and even if the enemies have shielding you just go serpent fang since you're building lethality items anyways right and you're just gonna 
you're just gonna run down the enemies and whenever whenever they're low hp you're gonna ult them which not only gets you ahead but also your teammates because he, sh he gives gold to his teammates when he when he gets kills or assists assists braum support is very strong as well um just with his shield and his tankiness and his sheer manliness um he shows dominance in the lane really like he works against a lot of the stuff that's good right now too um honestly it's just so annoying to have a braum in your face with the shield up you know what i mean it's just really really annoying to have to deal with morgana support i always praise it again one of the most underrated picks in the game early game she's fine you just booted the enemies a little bit with your pools of purple death purple venom um you try to hit the enemies with your first ability whenever you can. It's a little bit easier in the support role because, of course, you're not facing one enemy like in the mid lane. You're facing two enemies. So, what you know, they're not always going to be able to, to stay behind their minions, both of them at least. And, of course, in the late game, she skills incredibly well. Maokai support, very strong. You can play AP Maokai support. That one is not as good. But tank Maokai support is incredibly powerful. Very good catching out potential. Um, just overall, very good champion. Swain support... I don't know why I put him here. Like that's the one that I forgot to put up. I, that was the one. I, I knew something uh, was wrong with the tier list, and I knew I had forgotten something, which was Swain. Um, Swain support is giga broken right now. It's really, really strong. And like I was even, I was like, I, I'm even contemplating putting him in the S plus tier. Really, like Loki, he should be S plus tier. I'm not gonna do it though because I feel like not, not, not quite. You know, not quite S plus tier, but. He's so strong. You can build hard steel on him against melee champions. You can just skip the hard steel and go for full tank. You can go for damage. You can go for mixed damage, mixed utility with a wider scepter. Go for Leandris just to shred the tanks. And if you're just able to land your abilities, you're gonna get unkillable in the late game. Unkillable and a half. It is so disgustingly broken right now, the Swain pick. You know, talking about being unkillable as well, Alistar's ultimate makes you unkillable too, but Alistar is not quite as strong. You know, Alistar is very one-dimensional. You just want to dive the enemy. Um, don't get me wrong, you know, top of A tier still means very strong, but it's just there is some alternatives out there that do a better job. Uh, Lux support, again, you know, it's fine. You can catch enemies, get kills, you can ult enemies, and it's all good. Don't get me wrong. Um, the shield just feels a little bit lackluster now. You know, the nerfs to the shield to the second ability have definitely hit hit Lux at the, in the right spot. So yes, Lux is just okay, um, but it, you know, not as good. Karma support, same story. Like she's fine, she's okay, but I feel like she 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 lacks a little bit what some of the other enchanters have. Like she doesn't. Her shielding has a bit of a longer cooldown now. She doesn't really have many buffs to her team except for the movement speed buff. She has good CC though and good poking. That's the thing. Um, Sona, I don't even want to talk about Sona. I'm so depressed about Sona's change still. It's, I don't even. I don't. I don't want to talk about it. It's just not good. Her healing is weak now. Uh, her poking is weak. Her, her ult is very strong though, and her passive is very strong. That's the only thing. But it's just. I don't, want, I don't want to talk about it. I'll get depressed. Senna support is fine. It's okay. Um, if you don't really rely on your team to carry the game and you want to have some more ADC type of damage, you can pick Senna, Senna support. You can combine it with like a like a Gragas or with a Garen or sorry or with like a Nasus support. Uh, that's the one that's below her as well. Uh, it still works really really well. It works like a gem. Um, orange support. Okay, brand support does some good poking. Graga support is fine. Anyone else interesting talking about full AP Malphite support is actually better than this. He's like here. Um, contrary to popular belief, full AP Malphite support is actually pretty chat. It's actually it's a pretty chat pick. You can booty the enemies in lane with your first ability, and later on in the game, you as a support are gonna one shot the enemies because you're AP Malphite. As long as you just not fell behind, which you shouldn't, because you're gonna get some kills because you're AP Malphite. Um, Nasus support, I only really recommend you playing it with like either a Senna or a Soraka. Yes, it does work with Soraka too, um, but mainly with a Senna. It's really good. You know, the Ryla Scepter plus whatever, whatever build. The Winter's Approach got buffed as well recently. Um, it works really well. It's really, really good. Like, Nasus support, keep that in the back of your head. Ash support, you know, you can keep that one in the back of your head as well. 
um, but but not as not as far back in your head as the NASA's one. But Edge support still works as well. I, I made a recent video about it too. Misfortune support is not good anymore because Misfortune is trash now. So thank you all so much for watching the video. Again, I want to remind you, you know, follow the Instagram if you want to support the channel, if you want to support the coaching that I'm doing for people. I'm going to post before and afters uh, of, of the clients very, very soon on the Instagram page as well. So um, you'll see all of that soon too. Uh, fill in the form as well. Uh, here it is. You can fill the inquiry form if you're interested and I'll reach out to you. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next Wildlift video. Bye-bye.